No. As we all know, China, in Asia, the first country to fall in the hands of England was China. But not directly at all. Because China people were resisting it continuously for a long period of time. So now let us see how did China fall indirectly into the control of the Britishers. See, China was the most populated country like India where they have huge amount of the human labor working there at very less cost. Now, as we also have the fertile fields here and China is producing silk, China has produced porcelain, China is able to send its products to other places while India is also is able to produce spices and all the other products. Now, the restriction is that the Chinese emperor has given the permission to the European traders, especially England, only to do trade in one city and they did not accept any kind of gold or silver payments because earlier in Europe when this was happened and this was accepted, the entire gold and silver passed off to the other traders who were doing trading with them. So instead of that, they started to give no to the gold and silver. So they have to pay in cash and take the products in cash. So along with this, they have given restricted entry of the Europeans only to the particular city and they should not move on to the other places. So as the time passed on, the products which are produced in China were also produced in, in India. For example, like opium, which is very required for the people of China and they started to smuggling it into China because it was produced in India for very large and massive areas and it was sold for, by the Indian farmers to the British at very less cost and then these were imported into China illegally and instead of silk and tea, opium was given to the traders. So they need not pay any amount for the Chinese traders at that point of time. When the officials of China learnt about this, they banned the complete trade on this one city also and which obviously led to the quarrel of war between the England people and the China people. So when England people and China people fought with each other, it was called the Opium War. This Opium War was fought to twice. It is from 1839 to 1842 and again in 1857 to 1858 where after the fighting of these two wars, finally the China was defeated and asked to pay huge war indemnity amount back to England and also given free unrestricted trade to the England people, which obviously made it come directly under the control of the influence of the England people. But we have to remember it very carefully that though like India or any of the Latin countries or any other American countries, China was not controlled directly politically by any of these people. Countries like England, Germany, France or any other nations. China has to rule by herself. Administration is done by the Chinese emperor and he became just a nominal administrator and the economic activities of trade, everything were done under the guidelines of the England people and they forced China to sign many agreements and declare uh, England to be the most favorable nation and any kind of uh, special uh, concessions which are given to different countries in the process of trade would get automatically get attached to the English people also. So with this, English started to have their own control on the England's, China's economy and trade. But with the growing influence of Germans, France and the other countries, Spanish people, these people also started to enter into the regions of uh, China trade and to start to get benefits for them. So it is not only under the control of England, but Spain, then Germany, then France, all started to get the benefits from the trade result, which of the China people. And finally, Japan, which got its revolt in 1861 and started to get rapid industrialization. And in 1894, where Japan is in need of uh, colonies to get their raw materials at very less cost. So they had a war with China, which again, defeated China and made China to occupy some of the regions surrendered to Japan and also have to pay huge amount as war indemnity for the Japan people. So in this way, they have the England's control, England controlling, then we have France, then we have Germany and finally we also have Japan in the Asia, able to control the growth of 
China people. So, for namesake, China was not colony of any of the nations, but economic status or trade-wise, it is completely controlled by the other different nations of Europe as well as by Japan of Asia. So, that is the reason why China is known as semi-colony, not a regular colony.